An absolutely beautiful Saturday evening in New York. And what better way to spend your Saturday evening than taking the subway out to Old City Field. Well, it's only the second year, but the fans are streaming in and getting ready for a big Saturday night of baseball. At City Field in New York, Pick Sports presents New York Mets baseball tonight. The Mets play the Houston Astros. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez with you. Ralph Kiner joins us in just a little bit. Mets and Astros play the middle game of their three-game series. Last night, the Mets a 2-1 to one winner behind Mike Pelfrey. Pelfrey pitched well, but he also got some splendid support from the guys behind him. Well, they made some great plays in the field, the Mets here. Frank Corr, who's played great defense all year, it's never been the issue. Makes a perfect throw home. Chris Johnson thought there were two outs, thought the inning was over. He gets caught in the rundown. Blanco, we know, can throw. Great throw right there. Pagan gets to play the heck out of left and center field all year long. Makes a terrific catch. Frank Cor again up against the wall. Zahada makes a great running stab up against the, the Tark. So it was a game where they got great pitching. They only got three hits. But the defense came through and made some great plays in the field behind Pelfrey. And the Mets will try and generate a little more offense tonight for the race. Johan Santana, who has become the first Met pitcher in 33 years to throw back-to-back -back complete games and lose both games. Well, he's also three straight complete games and, unfortunately, two losses on those back two of those three. First guy to do it since David Cohn since 1990. He was victimized by the long ball in Houston. Hunter Pence single-handedly beat him with a three-run shot and the solo shot lost that one four to three and then lost two to one in Pittsburgh on two solo shots well he's at he's at Shea excuse me that's a fine he's at City <laughs> Field here much bigger ballpark this is much more conducive to Santana and Santana goes up against Brett Myers trying to make it 27 straight starts going at least six innings well that's a franchise record for a start of a season 26 straight starts of six innings or more uh, he, he ties Larry Durker, who did it over two seasons. And Larry Durker, of course, is one of the great pitchers. He beat his fellow mates his last time out. A beautiful start for him. His first start against the Phillies and his first career win against his old mates. He's looking to get a W tonight against the Mets. Myers has pitched so well, he's earned himself a three-year contract extension. Mets and Astros at City Field. All the action on Picks 11. And businesses by Dodge. Visit Dodge.com or see your local Dodge dealer today. By Subway, build your better breakfast and grab lunch to go too. 
by the Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales Event now through September 7th at your Lexus dealers and by Verizon Wireless introducing the Droid X, the next generation of does. Live out your Mets fantasy, suit up with Mets legends and take to the field at the Mets Fantasy Camp in January in Fort St. Lucie. Get to the phone at 718-565-4376 or visit Mets.com slash Fantasy Camp today. Keys to the game are brought to you by Cadillac. Visit CadillacTriState.com. Well, we know that Santana has struggled in the first inning, and he's got to push through that. to get a 1-2-3 up there or scoreless. And the Mets have not supported him. I mean, let's face it. He is, just should have 15, 16 wins at this point of the season. Uh, and the offense has not been hitting with men on base. We know that. They've left a ton of men on base, and it's been that way since the All-Star break. So that's a mighty mountain to climb, Gary. Mets will try to put the first foothold into the mountain with Santana going to the mound. The Mets and the Astros from City Field first pitch coming up. Jason Bourgeois slides into the leadoff spot. Michael Bourne down to number two to give them a right handed bat in that leadoff spot. Tommy Manzella gets the start at short. Angel Sanchez moves over to second. And that's the lineup that the Astros send out against Johan Santana. Well, Johan, we talked about it at the open uh, here 10 to 10 and 8, and that could easily be uh, 16 and 4. Look at that sparkling earn run average. Uh, victimized by the long ball. A little alarming the left handers hitting 272 against him. But, you know, he's just lost some tough ball games. Now take a look at the defense. It's brought to you by Subway. Build your better breakfast and grab lunch to go, too, if you so care. Uh, we'll take a look here. No errors. They played sparkling defense last night. We talked about Beltron last night in depth about his center field. Looks like he's lost a step with that brace probably affecting him. But with Pagan and Francoeur at the corners, it takes a lot of pressure off Carlos. Jason Bourgeois will lead off for the Astros, just the 19th start that he's made this year. 
65 games in AAA. Bourgeois hit 345. He's had just 64 big league at bats this year, hitting a 234. A ton of speed in that leadoff spot, and with Bourgeois and Bourne 1 2, that's about as fast a 1 2 combination as there is in the majors. As Santana starts the night with a fastball for a strike. Castro gets a back to back start here. The fourth time this season he started back to back games. I asked Josh Tolley if he was okay. He said no problem. They said they gave me a night off last night and you know Jerry likes Blanco with Santana so Tolley will start the day game tomorrow against Bud Norris catching R.A. Dickey which he does very well. Santana's off the play with the fastball and it's two and one. Bourgeois is 28 years old. He's been through six different organizations. Speed is his primary asset. He has never hit for much of an average. And the Fastball misses low and Santana behind three and one. Now Santana has had first inning difficulties as Keith mentioned but in his last start in Pittsburgh he struck out the side in the first inning. In fact struck out the first four batters to face him. Bourgeois has a base hit. And so the Astros get the leadoff man on. Well the Astros have been a team that reshuffled the deck at the, at the all star where they fired the coaching staff a lot of the coaching staff and the manager. And since then, as this club has turned it around and their hitting coach, the all star first baseman, Jeff Bagwell. Jeff, thank you. I just kind of drew a blank there, Gare. How can I forget that name? They fired Sean Berry, the hitting coach, and hired Bagwell. Well, they've been just turned it around since Jeff has taken over as hitting coach. Here's Michael Bourne, normally the leadoff hitter for the Astros, hitting number two tonight. He's riding a six game hitting streak. But Bourne is hit just 214 against left handed pitching this year. So Brad Mills going for something of a different look tonight. There he is right there. And the Astros have thrived since Bagwell came along. Jeff was doing some broadcasting earlier this year. He has a strike call. And it's over to Bourne. Well, we're, talk we're talking about Santana's first inning woes. You know, an ERA of six points. 7.67, excuse me, you can see right there. And after that, it's just lights out. A head on board 0 and 2, and the slider off the plate, a ball and two strikes. Hunter Pence will be next. For the Astros, who've won 10 of their last 15 games, they came to town off a four game sweep in Philadelphia, holding the Phillies to just seven runs. Another well pitched game last night. But Mike Pelfrey was better. And Boren grounds one to Castillo. to get the force at second, and that's all with the speed of Boren going down the line. No chance to get a double play. So that's the first out of the night. The Astros started out the season 0 and 8 under their new manager, Brad Mills, but they have turned it on and uh, trying to finish the season strong. They're in fourth place in the National League Central, trying to move up on Milwaukee for third. Here's Hunter Pence. Pence won for four in the game last night. And he was the sum total of the offense for the Astros when they faced Santana 11 days ago. A three run homer and a solo shot. Hit the three run homer in the first inning. And then after the Mets had tied the game, hit the solo shot. In the eighth to give the Astros the lead for good. The first home run in that first inning, the three run shot was legit. The uh, they're all legit, but it's obviously if it was here at City Field, it would have not even reached the fence. But both teams play in the same park. Well, the Astros, despite the fact that they've got that very reachable home run porch in left field in their home ballpark, they are dead last in the National League at home runs. They've hit just 86. Home runs this season. Pence leads them with 20. That's by contrast of it. 96 home runs, 10 more. Look at the choke up. Wow, two inches. At least. Toward the hole and a base hit for Pence. Bourne pulls in at second as Pagan scoops it up. So the second hit in this opening inning against Santana, and Carlos Lee will come up with two men on. Well, I've always felt a right hander's approach against Santana should be crowd the plate and make him throw you in. Because Santana's 
zone is that change up away, Gare. Make him throw you that fastball, and he can. But, you know, make him change, change, change the plan a little bit. Make him think about, boy, I've got to get that change up on that outside corner because that guy is really crowding the plate. Or you can look in. Here's big Carlos Lee, and he takes one of the dirt as Blanco knocks it down. 1 0. I mean, you know, pick your poison here. Santana can definitely uh, adjust. To most anything and everything. If you do crowd the plate, you're obviously going to be more vulnerable inside. But it comes a cat and mouse game. Then you can look area, you know, look away for a change up or set up inside for the fastball. Now, you know, John Tudor was a similar pitcher to Santana. Those great years with St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And Kevin Mitchell killed him because Kevin Mitchell stood on top of the plate. Took away that inside corner. One and to Lee. And he fouls back the fastball away. One and one. Lee has three career home runs against Santana in 39 career at bats. Of course, they were in the same division for a long time when Lee was with the White Sox and Johan was with the Twins. Lee has really picked it up lately. 25 RBIs in his last 27 games. After a very slow start to his year. Looped into shallow center. That's going to fall for a base hit. Born around third. He'll score the game's first run. A three hit opening inning for the Astros. Lee drives in his 74th run, and it's 1 0 Houston. Well, a good read by Bourne there. He knew right off the get go that this ball was a dying coil. Off the end of the bat, change up. And no hesitation right there. Warren scores his 71st run of the year. And so the Astros strike in the first inning. And after taking a break from his first inning troubles in his last start, they have found Santana again. Now, Chris Johnson, who was two for three last night, and is hitting 372 since the All Star break, the best in the National League. And Johnson takes a strike on the outside, nothing at one. Well, Johnson had a terrific first game in that series against the Mets, and then got Dickey. Uh, in Santana and they just kind of threw him off. Really didn't do any hardly any damage the remaining three games of the series. Johnson out to left center field closing ground is Beltron to grab it for the second out. So two out and two on. Well, that's the first one that Santana has allowed in his last three starts that hasn't come on a home run. He gave up the two home runs to Pence in Houston. He gave up the two home runs in Pittsburgh to Millage and Tabata. He had a two to one loss. But now three hits are produced to run here in the opening inning for the Astros. Here's Angel Sanchez playing second base tonight. And it's taken high ball one. Sanchez has been playing shortstop most days. Moving over to play second with Tommy Manzella at short tonight. Santana's now given up 24 first inning runs. The most runs he's allowed in any other inning is 13. He's allowed 13 runs in the fourth inning. So the first inning has by far been his most troubling. So what does that tell you? Like any great pitcher, get him early and often. Or you're going to have an L. It's behind on Sanchez, 2 0. And it's wide ball three. How about this? 24 first inning runs. You know how many runs he's given up in the second inning? Three. <laughs> so, go figure. Of course, if you give up runs in the first inning, you usually face in the bottom of the order in the second. 3 0 to Sanchez, not likely to be swinging, and he takes a strike. Sanchez acquired from the Red Sox early this season, making his 43rd start for the Astros. And he fouls it away, 3 and 2. Well, the Mets got a very fortuitous call, ball strike call last night when Hisnari 
Takahashi came in to save that ball game, the ninth off of Sanchez. I thought he walked him on that 3-1 pitch that was knee high. And that would have loaded the bases and home plate umpire Angel Campos called it a strike. It changed the whole complexion of that ninth inning. Sanchez then popped up for the second out and then Takahashi struck out Manzella to end it. Runners go 3-2 and it misses inside ball four and the bases are loaded. So the first walk issued by Santana. And now the Astros, who already have a run pushed across the plate, will get a chance with the bases full. Yep, it missed. Too much. So a big batter here for Santana, the light hitting Tommy Manzella. Manzella, who missed two months on the disabled list with a broken finger, hitting just 208 this year, but 340 against left handed pitching. And Santana misses badly with a slider, and it's ball one. So things not going well for Johan. Try to find his command in the opening inning, much as Mike Pelfrey tried to last night. Remember, Pelfrey had a 31 pitch first inning and worked out of a bases loaded mess before settling in. Uh oh. Zella takes low, and it's 2 0. Well, you got to sit on the fastball here. Nine to nothing in grand slams against the Mets. That's a strike. Two and one. Looks like Manzella was taking all the way. This will be the 27th pitch of the inning. And it's too high. Ball three. And now in danger of forcing it a run. Oh. You can do two things here. You can look middle in for a big one or you look away. A guy like Manzella is not a power hitter. You got to look to gap one here. 3 1. And he fouls it away. Last night, Nelson Figueroa walked the Mets light hitting shortstop. Ruben Tejada with the bases loaded. Elias did some fact check and found that Ruben's batting average with the number of the bats he has, lowest batting average with the most at bats to draw bases loaded walk. 1973. 3 2. Bounce toward third. Right comes in. And it's to first, not in time. The ball right and the runner from second base. Lee all arriving at the same time at third base. The third base umpire, Angel Campos, said that Wright didn't get there in time, so he had to go across the diamond and he couldn't get Manzella. And a run comes home. Oh, correct. Good, good hustle right there. He did beat him. And pulled off the bag, Ike Davis. Let's see. He beat him. He beat him. Well, the 3 2 with the runners one and running, that always changes everything. Very strange play, but it goes as an infield hit for Manzella to drive in a run. And it's 2 0 Houston. Now the number eight hitter, Humberto Quintero. And he takes a change up away for ball one. Right now, Santana is falling behind. And that's been giving him all the trouble. It's been ball one on just about everybody. Tero late on the fastball. One and one. Eight batters, only three first pitch strikes for Santana, and the pitcher Myers on deck. Four singles and two walks in the inning. Nothing hit especially hard. Change up foul away. Which wrong lined one into left to start the ball game. Pence found a hole on the left side. Lee hit a little flare to center field to drive in a run. And then Manzella with the infield hit. A couple of dings and a couple of dents, and Santana behind in the game 2 0. Now it's 1 2 to Quintero. And it's hit out to left center field. Easing over his belt, trying to grab it. And that finally retires the side. But the Astros post a pair. The first run of the game brought to you by Ram, award winning trucks. Carlos Lee drives in one, Tommy Manzel on the other. And the Mets down two at the start.
Carlos Reyes out of the lineup again tonight, nursing that oblique injury, and so Angel Pagan back in the leadoff spot where he went 0 for 4 last night. Same lineup as last night for the Mets when they managed just two runs and three hits. They'll try and do better tonight against the veteran Brett Myers. Well, Brett Myers, 9 and 7 with a sparkling earned run average. And we talked about his consecutive all 26 starts, six innings or more. He has had a terrific year. And we'll take a look at the Astro defense brought to you by Subway. Build your better breakfast and grab lunch, too, to go. Two. Carlos Lee, four start at first base. How about that? That gives him better defense out here. Much bigger ballpark here. For Zouar, Bourne, and Pence give him much better defensive outfield in the spacious ballpark here at City. Well, here's Pagan hitting a 297. 34th game he's led off this year. And he takes a strike from Myers. Brett Myers just turned 30 years old. First year with the Astros, just signed a three year contract extension to keep him in Houston. And why not with the year he's had? Well, the one thing we noticed in the start where he got the no decision when he went seven strong innings against the Mets and at the Minute Maid Park, his command wasn't wild. Got everything over here and pitched with purpose. And before Myers has always been a guy that's fallen behind. Get follow him every one year. He's fell in love with his breaking ball. Uh, it seems now to have figured it out. And he had a lot of volatility to him too. He didn't seem to be able to keep his composure. A good curveball strikes out Pagan for the first out. Clearly Myers has matured and that has certainly helped him on the mound. Well, look at this breaking ball. That bottom drops right out. So Myers fans the first man to face him. Here's Luis Castillo. Though he won for four last night and scampered home with the game's first run on a short sacrifice fly. A good read by Louis to get the Mets an early lead. And he takes high from Myers 1-0. Well, Louis, one of the toughest guys to strike out. Steve Myers, he almost takes that step almost to the first baseline, that back step. Big leg kick back, pointing almost to the shortstop. But he opens up and winds up facing home. Real classic delivery. Yeah. I always like the uh, guys that bring that leg back and point it almost at the shortstop. Like Doc did that. Carlton, big beautiful motions. Castillo fights one off and it's two and two. Still getting a chance to play with the injury to Reyes. And trying to show that he can still be an everyday player. Of course, he's under contract for another year with the Mets. One of one of more than a few. 2-2. Two -two. And it's too high to Castillo. The Mets have all of a sudden started drawing a bunch of walks these last few games. 30 walks drawn in the last six games. For a team that has been near the bottom in walks all year. Castillo grounds one right to the second baseman Sanchez for the second out. Well, well again, look at this big leg kick and back turned almost completely to the hitter, but he gets it through, stiffens that leg out and bends it. I just just a real beautiful motion. Effortless. Body working with arm in conjunction here. Sounds it's a beautiful like, thing. Sounds like a philosophy. It really does. Just like uh, an aesthetics uh, professor I once had. <laughs> Carlos Beltran hitting just 217, 0 for 3 last night. He did steal his first base of the year, and that was a good sign for Carlos. But it is coming very slowly for him. Takes one the other way, and the Mets have their first base runner of the night. Well, he's been struggling from the left side of the plate. He doesn't feel comfortable. He's been out in front. That's a backdoor slider on the outside corner, and he goes with it. So that's a good sign for Carlos. Because he's been pulling a little bit too much from the left side here. 
So David Wright will step in. David took an 0 for last night, but he drove in a run. His 85th, now fourth in the National League in RBIs. He has four career home runs against Brett Myers. Which equals the most he's hit against any pitcher. David also has four homers against likely candidates like Levon Hernandez, Jamie Moyer, Brad Penny, and remember the lefty for the Braves, Horacio Ramirez? Yes. David owned him. A lot of people owned him. That's why he's not there anymore. I'm very acerbic tonight. Suits you. Like vinegar. You're like vinegar Ben Mizell. <laughs> One and two to right. Ralph can probably make a comment about bigger vinegar Ben. He will. I can guarantee you when Ralph joins us in the next inning. <laughs> two and two to David. Tron and Carlos Lee exchanging pleasantries. 2-2 two, two to right, and the curveball is fouled off. Or a good up and in fastball right there. Just let's just see. It beats David in here now. It's a good purpose pitch. It's out of the strike zone. Looks like it was like trying to get a back a little back inside door, or whatever you want to call it. Front door slider. Let's see if he goes away. Curveball. And David lays off at a full count. So after Myers got ahead of him, Wright works his way back in. That'll get Beltron to start at first base. You think David's gotten a little closer? Boy, I know he's deep in that box. I think he's gotten a little closer to the plate. A few inches anyway. Beltron runs 3 2, check swing foul. Or tied up inside. What would that tell you as a pitcher right there? If we had Mr. Darling here, it'd be the question I'd ask Ron. It's pretty apparent that David's set to go up the middle. So, where if you're going up the middle with two strikes, as you always should with two strikes, you're most vulnerable inside. Quintero moving away. And the 3 2 bounce to third. Backing off is Johnson as a long throw to make right on target to get right. And in the inning, a hit and one left. We go to the second. Ralph Connor joins us when we come back. The Astros up 2 0. Brett Myers leads off against Johan Santana. 
And here in the Ralph Connor broadcast booth, we bring you our Hall of Famer, Ralph Connor. Ralph, how you doing? I'm doing fine. And uh, Vindery, Ben, yeah, I remember him well, left-hand pitcher. And one of the problems we had one time was in Houston, and we were taking off. And I was having trouble trying to get a seat where I wanted to be. And finally, Vendor Ben came up and said, hey, you don't sit down, we're never going to go. So I sat down. <laughs> were you a rookie, Ralph? I wasn't a rookie. I was the star of the team. But I didn't. Try. <laughs> you like Vendor Ben? I did, yeah, well, I, well, at that time, I liked him. After <laughs> that, I didn't. How did he get his nickname? I don't know that. Was he an acerbic personality? Yeah, well, yeah he was. God, well, that, that reminded me. I thought it was acerbic. No question he, about that. If he told you to sit down, as Myers sits down, that's the first strike after Santana. He was a good pitcher. He wasn't great, but he was good. One out of nobody on here is Jason Borges. Well, Ralph, it, it strikes me, you know, the Mets and Astros came into business at the same time. The Astros were the Colt 45s. Were those games in the early days with the Mets and the Colt 45s, were they like different in terms of the, the competition, was battling to be the best expansion team then? Well, you know, the, uh, the Mets could not beat Houston. Houston wore them out all the time. In fact, the year the Mets won, 1969, the Mets never won the game in their ballpark. Of course, they started one year ahead of the Mets. They had a farm club in 1961. Mets did not have a farm club. So they actually had some players that under control. And uh, before the season actually started in 62, the year of expansion. That was quite a ballpark they played in. It was a makeshift ballpark. And it had mosquitoes bigger than B-29s. <laughs> you had citronella all over the place. They stopped by right at foul ground. It's two and two. That wasn't Buff Stadium. What was the, what was the name of the stadium, Ralph? It was a, they built it. It was a temporary stadium before they got the uh, the Astrodome. Right next door to where they built the. Right. It was. A, in fact, they used it as a practice field later on. Did you stay at the Shamrock Hilton? All stayed at the then? Shamrock, and that was a great hotel. What a great hotel! And they had a great bar there. They had a outstanding bar there. You know, you know. And the other thing about it was, you had the brown bag in Texas. It means you had to take your own whiskey into the uh, into the uh, bar. They didn't sell it as a mixed drink. And they give you a label with your name on. That's it. right. And if you didn't finish the bottle, you had to leave it there. Really? You would be. Uh, I remember it was a dry county in Wichita, Kansas, and uh, one of the players for the Wichita Arrows, which is the Cub organization, uh, brought me in there, and we had to stop off at a liquor store. I got a half pint of whatever, and I would say I'll have a Keith and soda. Really? The bartender. <laughs> because they, they, they labeled their bottles with our names. And they had the bottles in alphabetical order to their names. Is that before or after you had the half pint? That's before. That's <laughs> after I got sent down. <laughs> Here's Michael Bourne with two out. Can I ask you a question? What was the point of that? Of what? Well, why, why did they make you go to so much trouble just to have a drink? Because it was a dry county. It was a, the, you had to do it that way. And, uh, of course, they, you had to uh, buy your own whiskey away from the hotel or any bar. And you brown that bag. You could carry it around in a brown bag. And that was the whole thing. That happened for years down there. Of course, the Mets had an unusual thing happen. Like a born with a two out hit. Just past Ike Davis. They, uh, when they went to use them for the first time, the Mets had to wait to get their plane. They had to change planes. We got them to Houston in the morning. It was about six in the morning. That's when Casey's tangle walked away and he said, "Where are you going, Casey?" And they said, "He said, uh, I'm going to be embalmed." They said, <laughs> "It was really a tough flight. They got there really late." You flew the prop planes back then, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, he had that, and we uh, were in uh, in Milwaukee. Had just won a doubleheader, and the Mets were flying high. That was their first year of uh, playing, and it was really in Houston to win too. Here's Hunter Pence with two on the runner on. He pops one up, shallow left for Pagan, and Angel tracks it for the third out. One in and one left. Mets come up in the bottom of the second, down two nothing.
down 2 nothing. Mike had a six game hitting streak stopped last night but he's now drawn five walks in the last two games. And takes ball one from Myers. It'll be Davis then Frank Corey and Blanco for the Mets in the home second. Ralph I know you've been watching what do you think about uh, the second half woes of uh, Ike Davis here offensively. Well it's sort of normal for a young ball player to come to the major leagues and do well and not stay as a outstanding prospect. But one of the problems he has is that he drops his hands and when you drop your hands you don't get them back up you're in trouble. Drives one to deep right center field back goes Bourne deep in the gap and he runs it down. Death Valley at City Field. Mike hits at 405 feet, just a long out. Oh, well, watch the hands drop, as Ralph stated. It's a lot of take back. And he just got in enough on Davis, because we all know when Davis hits one, there's not a ballpark that can hold him. He has real power. He's really a uh, good potential, but he's got to pick up. Um, what he does get into the ball. He was behind that pitch, and that's why he didn't hit it in the good part of the bat. Right, Corey's ball lands in the seats and pops out again. Well, there's the contact. You can see closer to the label, and there's your difference right there. It's a matter of three inches. The bat, the bat should be in front of about three, you're right, Keith, about three or four inches farther up toward the pitcher. And then he would have got on a good part of the bat. And that would have given him a lot more distance. When you hit that ball off the center of the sweet spot of the bat, you lose a lot of distance. Frank Core, five for ten over the last three games. It's good to see Jason Bay in the dugout. Jason now riding the bike, starting his conditioning, trying to start the long road back from a month on the sidelines. Because of his concussion. He's always such a, a good interview, honest and forthright in his when he deals with the press. And he knows he's got a long road back, getting himself back in condition to play, let alone his legs, number one, are most important. Frank Gore hits one the other way toward the right field line. Pence won't get there. Cuts it off nicely. Frank Gore to second and in sliding with a one out double. Well, Jeff continues to take the ball the other way with good results. Well, this is what he did last year when he had the hot second half when the Mets picked him up was go to the opposite field. And Pence runs this ball down. A high fastball. You know, one of his problems, Keith, as you all know, is that he swings with a lot of bad pitches. He won't wait in the ball. And when you wait and get a strike you can hit, that's when you learn that you can hit and be a good player. He's a great athlete. There's no doubt about it. But he's over anxious all the time and will chase anything. And of course, the opposition knows that. Ooh, I was talking with Frenchy today, and he said the worst thing that happened to me this year is that I got off to a really good start. So then, when I slumped, I didn't have anything to fall back on in terms of a different approach. And uh, he just felt as though he had to change everything, which he has the last couple of weeks. Oh, I don't understand that. I mean, he's got what five years, five six years in the big leagues. He slumped, but he slumped before. Yeah, you but want to get off to a good start. And he had two good years, his first two years with the Atlanta Braves. But I think his point was that the last, there were two years in there in the middle when nothing went right, and that when he started out well this year, swinging at everything, it probably didn't. Reinforce good habits that probably reinforce bad ones. Well, he got over anxious and chased everything. Blanco now takes it, a call third strike. Yeah, it takes a fastball right over the strike zone. Well, that's called getting set up right there. Yeah, it's, that's called guessing for another pitch and you didn't get it. Yep. That's what it is. Whenever you get cooked, I speak for myself, whenever I got. Absolutely, you're right. I, I took a call third strike fastball, I would get mad at myself and I said, I let that pitcher set me up. You don't mind a great curveball getting out. Well, with two strikes, you can't look for any one pitch. You have to be defensive, put the ball in play, and get the bat on the ball. 
can't look one way with two strikes. Ruben Tejada with a check swing tapper back to Myers. So the Mets are done in the bottom of the second. A double and one left. After two, it's two nothing Houston. And Joey Amalfitano, who played only one. There was Norm Larker and pitcher Dick Farrell, as well as other veterans who made up the nucleus of the team as the Colts broke camp and headed for Houston. 1962, Houston Colt 45s under manager Harry Kraft. They won 64 games and lost 96 and finished 24 games ahead of the Mets. One of the great stories was that Bob asked my body, he was a good ball player. And, uh, he was, and Bob Murphy was on there talking about Bob and how well he played and all that. Charles Lee hits one out to center for Beltron. And that's the first down. And then Bob went on to say that uh, Espermani's parents were coming to the ball game. In fact, they're high and outside, as they called the pits to the batter. They're high and outside. <laughs> of course, Bob Espermani later would become a Met. One of the many third base solutions that didn't pan out. Had a, long had a brother that was playing too. Yeah. Chris Johnson fouls one off. I think his brother holds the all time record for batting average in baseball. He played one game, went three for three, and they hit the 1,000 for his career. Can't ask for much. Yeah. Pretty good. He quit while he was ahead. That was a good mark. Joey went on to have a long, lengthy coaching career. I remember as a kid growing up as a coach for the Giants, Cubs, when I was in the big leagues, Dodgers. Two to Chris Johnson with Angel Sanchez on deck. Santana with a rough first inning. Gave up a pair of runs. RBI hits by Lee and Manzella. And a foul tip held by Blanco. Johnson a strikeout victim. That's the second for Santana. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by Ram, award winning trucks. Santana starting to settle in. And now Sanchez, who walked his first time up. See where the Phillies have defeated the Padres today in an afternoon game. And Blanton threw another good game, Gary. Blanton went six, allowed six hits. 
Blanton's had a tough year over there. His last two or three starts now, he's starting to pick up the slack. How about what the Phillies had to overcome last night? They had a one run lead, bottom of the ninth, two out, two strikes, and Brad Lidge balked in the tying run. And they had to go on to win it in the 12th. Ouch. A strange year for the Phillies, but they're still right there. One, two, and Sanchez pokes one to second base. And Santana has his first one, two, three inning of the night. We go to the bottom of the third, two nothing, Houston. Lead off for New York. Kevin Burkhardt standing by with one of the 86 Mets. Yeah, Gary, we've got some Mets alumni in the house tonight. Rafael Santana is with us. He's been here this weekend. And uh, first of all, I mean, can you play? I mean, if the Mets need another guy tonight, you look like you're in fantastic shape. I wish I could. <laughs> you're still in the game, though. You're just telling me that you're actually doing some scouting for the White Sox. Yes, I'm still with uh, this is my 13th year with the White Sox, and then I'm in charge of the operation. For the West Sox over in the Dominican Republic. You do when when you're down there as Johan Santana bats here in the home third. When you're down there, how does it go? How does how does it work, Rafael? I mean, when you know, in terms of the scouting, the kids down there. I mean, how young does it start? When do you start looking at kids? Can you describe the process and what it's like? Well, there, uh, you know, you you're gonna be seeing players in different ages every day, and then uh, uh, you're lucky enough if you got to sign a kid when he's seven, 16 or 17, and then you know we got we got you know some of those. We got some of those that we have signed, and uh, it's pretty interesting. So I, you know, I enjoy what I'm doing, and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, this is my passion, and, and I don't think you know it can be better. Uh, Carlos Lee, you only played first base four times this year, made a heck of a play to retire Santana there, one away. We talked to another Santana, Rafael Santana. Tell me about uh, when you were picked up by the Mets. You were with the uh, the Cardinals, released, picked up here. What was your first reaction when you were picked up by this organization in '84? Well, uh, first of all, I was a free agent in 1983, and then I was playing winter ball, and I was having a great season of winter ball. So the Mets went down, and uh, they offered me a contract. I had I had a choice, you know, uh, with, to pick a team that I want because there were like four or five teams came after me. But I, I figured that the Mets had a better chance, and then uh, they brought me to the big league training, and uh, happened to be that David Johnson had just got the job, and he knew me from when he was managing Double A. And I had like little, little less than a year in the big league, you know, experience. So he told me, uh, Rafi, I know I don't have to give you a chance to make this team, but I got a couple guys here that uh, the day ahead of you, I want you to go to AAA, and you're gonna be my first choice. So uh, it happened to be that like a month and a half I was here. So you 
So you you pretty much had an idea. You come in here, you get your shot, and, and this, certainly the team had, had a good chance to win. Yes, 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 I did. And, uh, you know, I played here for four years, and I really enjoy it. What, what do you see as the biggest difference in the game? I mean, when you, when you look back to when you played to now scouting young kids, what is the biggest difference you see in, in how the game is played? Well, right now, uh, the game is well advanced. I mean, there are a lot of weightlifting and uh, – uh, they a lot of uh, uh, technical stuff, you know, hitting wise, pitching wise, and I think that that makes the difference these days. So uh, uh, you know, the guys, you know, we there's some great, great players out there these days, and and I think uh, you know, I mean, you think it makes a difference, a good difference. I mean, do you think all the things that are done today are actually beneficial with mean, all the weightlifting, all the things that are done? I'm not going to say every one, but some of them, and. Uh, you know how things are that uh, the players are getting smarter these days, and uh, I don't know what what is, is is out there, but you know they they good players. You enjoy coming back and to see uh, you know some of the, some of the people in this organization getting some chance to see this ballpark. Definitely, Every, you know this, this is my first time here in this ballpark, and I really enjoy it. And it's, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Rafael, good to catch up with you. Thanks for the time, all right? Thanks, Kevin. Rafael Santana, guys, back upstairs to you. All right, thanks, Kevin, and thanks to Rafi and. Uh, Keith, the, the, the numbers don't really speak to how important a piece Rafael Santana was for that team. Well, Rafi was our eighth hitter in that lineup, and uh, he did as good a job. Base hit there by Castillo on a breaking ball. He did as good a job. Oh, Those bobbles, and Castillo will take the extra base. So a single for Castillo, E9. On Pence. Well, what made this play possible was Louie hustling down the line and taking a hard turn at first base and not taking anything for granted. And once Pence bobbles this ball, he was in a position to advance to second base. But getting back to, to Ralphie. He did a good a job as Ozzie Smith did in 82 with our ball club when we won in that eighth position as far as with two outs, getting a base hit, and getting that hitter, the pitcher up there, and flipping the lineup and get to the top of the order. Now Carlos Beltran has singled his first time up. Here's a little known fact. I didn't even know this until just this second when Dave Freed, our statistician, pointed out. And that is... That you and Rafael Santana were also teammates in Cleveland. Yes. For about a week. Yes. <laughs> I forgot. I'm trying to forget. I know everything you try to forget Cleveland. everything that has to do with the Indians. <laughs> it was. It was. Oh, I was just. I tried to forget about everything because I was finished. And it was just not fun being horrible. Did you ever go down to the river that's on fire? The, 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 no, it was. <laughs> they cleaned it up by then, Ralph. Um, it was called the Flats. Okay. There's a bunch of bars down there, rock and roll bars. It's a big rock and roll city, obviously. You got the uh, Hall of Fame, man. Rock and roll Hall of Fame. I wasn't a big fan of the flats. Throw a ball to Beltron for a strike, two and two. I had black cord fever in Cleveland. Black ball cord play. fever? Yeah, What's that? Telephones. Oh. I had $1,000 bills <laughs> the whole six months I was in Cleveland. Thousand dollars a month. I'm not kidding. Get me out of here. I was like, I was waking people up <laughs> in the middle of the night. Talk to me. Three and two to Carlos. With the runner is second and two down. That's down two nothing in the third. It was a player that was ready to grave him. And he looked it up on the map. He didn't know where it was. And he saw it was on a river there. And then he had a wonderful beach. He said, oh, that's going to be great playing there. But the river was on fire. Now ball, close call, but C.B. Buckner, the first base umpire, called a foul. That's where the ball goes over the bag or not, and this ball on the bouncing ball is outside of the bag according to the umpire. So foul ball. Bag is in fair territory. Carlos Lee would beg to differ. Three and two to Beltran, and he hits one right to the second baseman Sanchez, and that retires the side. So the Mets get a hit for the third straight inning, but can't do anything with it. And Brett Myers and the Astros lead two nothing.
second in the National League. Jose Batista's never hit more than 16 home runs in a season. He has 11 this month. And Clay Buckholz might be the front runner for the AL Cy Young. He's now 15 and 5 with a strong month of August for the resurgent Red Sox. Tommy Manzella takes a strike as we start the fourth inning. Manzella had an infield hit to drive in a run in the first inning. Two uh, unusual home run, 50 home run hitters. One was uh, Gonzalez, who's now with the uh, uh, the Arizona team. The other was Anderson, who played for Baltimore. He had 50 home run years and never came close before or after. Now, Hack Wilson, who is the all time RBI leader in the National League, 191, hit 56 home runs for the National League record. The next year, he hit 13. Line over short and a base hit for Manzella. So Tommy Manzella's two for two. The CIA created her. Now they want to destroy her in two weeks. The biggest action thriller this fall isn't on Fox or NBC. It's on Pix 11. It's Nikita premiering September 9th at 9 on Pix 11, the home of the CW. Khrushchev. Right. We will bury you. I was thinking Boris and Natasha. <laughs> Boris and Squirrel are getting away. <laughs> Here's Humberto Quintero. And he takes a strike from Santana. Quintero fly to center his first time up. The Astros now with six hits against Santana. With the pitcher Myers on deck. Well, aberrational home run seasons have happened, I guess, throughout baseball. One of the classic ones, and Ronnie and I were talking about this the other night, was Davey Johnson, who had that one year with the Braves. He had 43, and he had never hit. He had 42 as a second baseman and one as a pinch hit. Wasn't that the same year that the three guys on that yes, team had Evans, 40 for the Braves? Evans and uh, Hank Aaron. Right. right. First time that had ever happened. First and only time, I guess, isn't it? I think it's happened. Uh, didn't happen in Colorado after that. And four 30 home run hitters with the Brooklyn, with the uh, LA Dodgers. Well, a lot of people don't know about Atlanta. Atlanta is one of the highest elevations of any major city That's in, right. in the United it's States. That's right. Two thousand feet. Yeah. Well, not you take out Denver. Right. Well, Arizona also. It's over a thousand feet elevation. In fact, uh, there was just some talk this week about uh, them trying to reconfigure. Chase Field in Phoenix to try and make it less hitter friendly. Maybe move the fences back a little bit. Well, you know, one of the problems there, it's mile high and the balls travel 10% longer uh, for the hitter. So 10% uh, of 300 feet is 30 feet. Well, to give a Rancor in toward that short fence and negotiates it nicely. For the first down. To give, an, to give an idea about the mile high and how the, how the ball travels, and I'm a hacker when I golf, and I haven't golfed in a long time, but I've played up in up in Denver, and it's really a two club difference when you play up in that altitude. Big difference. I played there too, both ways. I played there as a ball player, and the ball travels further. Obviously, the other thing about it, the thin air. Makes the curveball not curve as much and the fastball faster. David Wright really aggressively charging at third, and that's going to get Dave Clark down to talk to Myers, who handles the bat pretty well. And David was really down his throat, and he's saying, if you're probably telling him, look, if Wright's going to come in down your throat, pull that bat back and pop one by him. Myers has nine hits this year, so he can swing the bat. Speaking of swinging the bat, we got to ask a question of Keith. That's bunt by Myers, and Santana will go to first with it. One four of the sacrifice. Got to ask Keith whether he thinks Bezio is a candidate for the Hall of Fame. Craig Bezio. 3,000 hits, Ralph. You like that? Got to go in. He also was a catcher, played catcher. He also was a second baseman, an all star second baseman, an all star. Uh, also catcher played, also played center field, and they played center field. I mean, this guy has some real qualifications. Nobody ever talks about it. 
They had I, two great players there, Bagwell and Bezier. I think Biggio's absolutely a Hall of Famer. Yep. And it's, it was a great era for a second baseman when you think about it. I mean, the runner at second and two outbursts. Ron takes a strike. You've got Robbie Alomar, who is probably the best second baseman of his generation. And only played for the Mets. Well, we'll, we'll leave that out. <laughs> then you've you got to add that. Then you got Biggio, and then you got Jeff Kent, who's the all time home run hitter. Oh, well, he's got baseman. the home runs. No question about that. I mean, you know, Ryan Sandberg's in the Hall of Fame. Bill Mazeroski's in the Hall of Fame. To me, all three of those guys, Biggio, Kent, and Alomar, have got to be in the Hall of Fame. Well, Biggio was a very, very good player. And he played those positions and was uh, his all-star there. You get 3,000 hits, you get the first ballot, you're in. I mean, that's to me, 3,000 hits is still means what it, what it means. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's an interesting point because 500 home runs doesn't necessarily mean as much if you did it in the last 20 years with Jeff Bagwell, who didn't quite get to 500 home runs, but might be a Hall of Famer anyway. Mm, okay. I mean, he's a guy who's never had any taint, a co a, you know, next to his name, which I think helps him in this era as well. Two and two now to Bourgeois. You know, Mike Piazza is probably going to be uh, a first ballot inductee. You know, one of the greatest hitting catchers of all time, or certainly of his generation. Well, he hit more home runs than they catch in one season. Yep. That's pretty good right there. And Mike got big hits, too. Two, two to Bourgeois, and he pops one up. Except it is a uh, possible uh, candidate for using help. A leadoff hit for Manzella. He's stranded. Still 2 0 Houston. Mets and the Astros. Astros in front two to nothing. And Mets have some alumni here this weekend. I caught up with Doug Flynn, who is here now, former Gold Glove winning second baseman. And well, you know, it's funny. We were just talking, and we were talking about the strike year of '81. You had probably a little different activity than most. I mean, during during the strike, as you're of course keeping yourself in baseball shape. What did you do that summer? Well, a lot of folks might not call it baseball shape, but uh, that was, you know, we didn't know how long we were going to be out. So for a week or two, we just worked out and worked out and worked out. And then the Oak Ridge boys called and said, Doug, why don't you go on the road with us? And I said, yeah, I could, I could do that because I had known them for a few years. So I got on a bus, traveled around from city to city, got up and sang a song or two with them every night, just had a blast. I don't think everybody did that during the strike, by the way. You know, uh, I was checking the record book, and I believe I was the only one. <laughs> David Wright leading off the inning, and Hunter Pence puts him away for one down as we talk to Doug Flynn. Well, you, of course, were in the Tom Seaver trade that came over to New York. What was your reaction you know, when you had found out that, hey, I'm, I'm being traded for Tom Seaver? Your reaction, and then when you got to New York, 
the atmosphere. Can you give give me a flavor of that, Doug? Well, I was a little disappointed it wasn't straight. Having some trouble with the uh, microphone. Uh, we'll try and get Kevin and Doug back in just a moment. And Mike Davis bats with one out of the fourth. And he rips one toward the right field corner, headed toward the wall, and it's in the corner for an extra base hit. Davis to second, sliding in just ahead of Pence's throw with a one out double. Twenty third double of the year for Ike Davis. Wants the ball away, and it's right down the pipe. He is number four in extra base hits by a player in the uh, National League. And right there, that's his 39th extra base hit, and he just didn't get there in time. He had to go all out. And now Frank Coro doubled to right his first time up. That's now a four hits off Brett Myers. Check swing right back to Myers. Checks well, on Davis and gets the out. Oh, it looks like we have the microphone fixed. Let's go back to Kevin. Yeah, thanks, guys. Doug, you were talking about the Seaver trade and your reaction. Yeah, Johnny Bench and Pete Rose called me off to the side and said, Doug, it's a great opportunity for you to go and maybe get a chance to play every day. Buddy Harrelson was and uh, Felix Mion were guys that were starting to get a little bit older. But what two wonderful people that took me in, as did all of New York, and said, you know, we know you didn't make the trade, and here's an opportunity for you to get a chance to play every day. And I tell kids now, if I ever had a chance or wanted to teach someone how to play infield, I'd go to Buddy Harrelson. He was a good person. Uh, he was a great player, and Felix Mion has become one of my best friends. So New York has treated me extremely well. Is there anybody you watch today that, that you admire uh, playing second base? Uh, yeah, there's a few guys. Uh, I think... Um, but the game's a little different. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I Brandon Phillips is a pretty good ball player in Cincinnati. A little lackadaisical for me, but he doesn't miss many balls. He doesn't make very many mistakes. And, uh, you know, he's got a lot of potential. I'd like to see him play a little bit harder. Uh, but, boy, what a great talent. Uh, Doug, uh, certainly it's it's fun to catch up with you, and, and uh, thanks for stopping by, okay? Hey, the honor is all mine. What a beautiful facility. It's just a great pleasure to be back here, see some old friends, and I hope they'll uh, include me every year. All right, Doug Flynn, guys, go back up to you with Blanco at the plate. Doug Flynn was a terrific second baseman. Had to play shortstop more than he probably should have, but... Boy, at second, he was just wonderful to watch. It was Pat Zachary, Doug Flynn. Who else was in that trade, uh, Gary? Steve Henderson and Dan Norman. That's right. Norman was not a, a major league ball player in any way. They got four players. Of course, Zachary was a good pitcher. Now there's Doug Flynn in action. Gold Glove winner for the Mets in 1980. 2 nothing Houston after four.
inning gave up two runs and so far those are the only two runs of the game as he takes on the Astros in the fifth. Michael Bourne leads off. Oh. He gets drilled. Only the second batter Santana has hit this year and it gives the Astros a fast leadoff base run. That hurts. That hurts. That's not a good spot. A little bit lower down on the elbow. That would hurt worse. At least he's able to smile. And so the Lee's leading base stealer, Michael Bourne, 44 steals this year, is aboard, and Hunter Pence the batter. Pence is one for two. He's single to left and fly to left. Pence with the two home runs against Santana in Houston 11 days ago. He became just the fourth player ever to hit two home runs against Johan in a game. The other three are Juan Gonzalez, legitimate home run hitter, Frank Thomas, legitimate home run hitter, and Josh Fields. He doesn't belong in that group. Well, he's a fielder anyway. Interesting. Interesting lead that Bourne takes. He's leading the league in stolen bases and. Doesn't take a big lead. Got thrown out last night by uh, Blanco. He's one of those guys who only takes his good lead when he's going to run. And that kind of gives it away. Well, that's really a short lead right there. I'll tell you what, he's going to have a big old walnut in his tricep tomorrow. Yeah, I have sea legs signature on his uh, back. <laughs> Caught for the 11th time last night by Blanco, who made a perfect throw. A little bigger lead. Bigger lead, yeah. There he right. goes. And it's hit in fair territory. Blanco throws out Pence. And Bourne's in second with one out. Might have put a little hit and run on there. Not sure. That's one thing you might can't really tell. The only way you can tell is that the runner looks back to home plate and in the middle of the of halfway to between first you and should. second. Yeah. And yeah. You got to look back. Got to find the ball and make sure that you can go. That's a straight steal. That's a straight steal. He never looked. I think you're right. So a runner in scoring position for Carlos Lee, who drove in the first run of the game with a bloop single to center. One for two. And he takes a strike. By the way, um, question I asked three or four innings ago, we finally have the answer. Vinegar Ben Mizell got his nickname because he was born in Vinegar Ben, Alabama. Good reason for that. And Vinegar Ben Mizell was later a congressman from North Carolina. Like uh, Jim uh, Bunny. Lee smacks one to deep left field. Forget it. Carlos Lee with a long two run homer, his 19th of the year. A three RBI night for Lee. Santana gets victimized by the long ball again. And it's 4 0 Houston. That is five home runs allowed by Santana in his last three starts. Well, that's a strong man. Tried to come in with a fastball. Look at Blanco set up in. He got it in a little too much to plate and down. Not up and in. And boy, oh boy, that is a two iron right there. Slight draw to it. Well, Lee has really put a hurt on Santana tonight. A bloop single to drive in a run. A great diving stop on Santana's bid for a double. And now a two run homer. A game in Atlanta is out of control. That's that six up there. Is that eight or six on the board, Gary? It's eight now. And that's Hudson going for his 15th. Ricky Nolasco, remember, was trying to work through a knee injury in that game. And he got torched for six runs in the second inning. Chris Johnson is 0 for 2. He's flying to center and struck out. Yeah. 
good changeup, strikes him out. And Johan has just his third of the night, second time he's gotten Johnson. Well, those are the home runs that Santana's allowed. It's only the third home run he's allowed at home this year. Of course, six of his last eight starts have come on the road before tonight. But uh, Carlos Lee made the ballpark look small. Here's Angel Sanchez. He's walked and grounded to second. Kind of like when Ralph Kiner was hitting home runs. There was no ballpark that could contain him. <laughs> and uh, what do I owe you for that? Nothing. Just I've looked at I've looked at the numbers. They're pretty impressive. Down to third base. And David Wright throws out Sanchez to end the inning. But Carlos Lee puts it on the crimp in Johan Santana's night. A pull of them, a two run homer. His 19th. Halfway through at City Field, 4 0 Houston. Verizon Fios call 1 888 get Fios. Nice crowd gathered on a Saturday night in New York. Just about a perfect evening for a ball game as Ruben Tejada leads off the fifth inning. Ruben had a comeback run, a check swing his first time up. Picked up a base hit last night. He is two for his last 46. It's this one toward the hole, and he's got another base hit. So things starting to look up at the plate for Ruben Tejada. And the Mets have the leadoff man on for the first time tonight. Well, they got a base hit on a breaking ball last night. This one on a fastball. He actually overran that ball, that ball going on the inside part of his glove by his wrist. Now I know he's your ace, but is there any question about letting Santana bat here down four nothing? Well, I think it's early enough where you can do it, Gary. You're gonna you got one, two, three, four, five more trips to the uh, to hit innings to hit. He is your ace. You want him to hold the fort. You want to keep him happy. He's been um, aligned a lot by being taken out of ball games when they shouldn't have taken him out. What's your feeling, Gary? You would want to lift him and try to get some offense going? I think it's a 50 50 kind of thing. I think for a team that hasn't been scoring a lot of runs, I think when you have an opportunity, sometimes you have to make the move. Well, yeah, who are you going to put up in this place? I mean, you don't have anybody on the bench that's hitting well. Well, you've got Tolley who's hitting around 300. You've got Carter. Well, Tolley, you can't pitch him. You've really only got one catcher now. Two catchers. You gotta save him in case. Right, and the other problem for Jerry, of course, is that he's shorthanded because Reyes is active, but 
not available to play. Right. So he's only got four bench players. And one of those is Luis Hernandez, who was just called up. Santana drops down the puck. And Myers will go to first for him. One three on the sacrifice. Getting to Hunter the second. Well, at least he used him to pick up a base runner and one base on the sacrifice base hit. Base prior, I should say. So now Angel Pagan looking for his first hit in this series. He struck out a fly down tonight, 0 for 6 in the two games. Pagan trying to stay above the 300 mark. This is the fourth inning the Mets have had runners in scoring position and have come out empty. It's been so difficult for them to drive in runs this year, but the second half in particular. Oh, for five so far tonight with runners in scoring position. Pagan's been the Mets' best all year, hitting 372 with runners in scoring position. That's third in the National League. Here's Castillo on deck. That's what the Mets have done in August in RBI situations. Hard to win that way. And put an exclamation point on that. Look how the pitching has been. Mm -hmm. Exemplar. Or exemplary. Does it matter, Carol? Are you eating twenty more? It has been exemplary. Yes. It's a good example anyway. <laughs> now Myers ahead on Pagan one and two. And he lays off the slider. Two and two. There are the numbers coming into today. The two Padres, Gonzalez and Ludwig, one two in the National League with Ryan's in scoring position. Ludwig's got a nice pickup for that. Kind of Aged out of a spot in St. Louis by the rookie John Jay and Padres needing offense got him and he's helped. 2 2 and he struck him out with a high fastball. And that was really out of the strike zone there. That's up the ladder. One thing you got to learn in the major leagues you cannot hit this pitch. The only guy I know that could hit that pitch well would be Yogi Bear. <laughs> Manny Sangin. Maybe Manny, too. Huh? Clemente? Clemente was a wild springer, too. Well, I remember Red Shandy's having a meeting one time, and Sanguian was just killing us. And Red just said to the pitchers, God darn it, throw the ball down the middle. <laughs> Maybe we can get him out that way. <laughs> One and one to Castillo. Well, those Pittsburgh teams, they were just this one master hitter after the other. They had the supreme third hitter in Al Oliver. He can hit. Classic third hitter, line drive hitter, hit left handers. He had Stargill hitting cleanup. Slap toward the middle, Manzel arranging over. And he throws out Castillo to end the inning. A leadoff hit and one left. Five in the books, four nothing Houston.
A score without free score. <laughs> Very quiet in here. <laughs> Tommy Manzella leads off the sixth inning against Johan Santana. Manzella's two for two. And he yanks one foul from now past Dave Clark. I'll tell you one thing, Gary. One time in Houston, I was working with Bob Murphy in the radio booth. And uh, all of a sudden, I see Bob jump up and down, and he's stamping his feet on the floor. What had happened? The ticker tape had caught on fire. I was smoking. I was smoking cigars in those days, and that thing got the uh, ticker tape on fire. And we had a fire in the broadcast booth. Used to have that ticker tape bringing the the out of town scores. Out of town right? scores, yeah. Oh, and two to Manzella, who had an infield single to drive and run the first, and then. Pulled one through the hole for a base hit in the fourth. The eight hitter, Quintero on deck, and then the pitcher, Myers. Yes, this calls third strike, and Manzella down looking. Fourth strikeout for Santana. Let's check in with Kevin. Guy sitting next to me is Mike Fargo. He is uh, a Major League Baseball authenticator. You know, a lot of people are very angry at Mike because he gets a lot of baseballs during the game, between 13 and 20 a game. And everyone wonders why he gets them all. Well, he's authenticating them for Major League Baseball. Essentially, what it does is it prevents counterfeiting. As we take a look into Mike's little briefcase over here, got about, what, nine balls so far. And the little holograms on the balls are coinciding with a barcode that goes into a little scanner. It immediately goes into the system for Major League Baseball. Mike logs what the baseball is from. Basically, anything used in a game that Mike sees with his own eyes. So, if Johan Santana throws a ball that's fouled off by Tommy Manzella, he might get that. If there's a broken bat, he might get that. Maybe a special base that the Mets want to uh, to pull out later in the game. Anything goes during the game. It has to remain in the ballpark, though. Home run balls, like a special home run or something like that, or a special base hit, are pre-marked. So, if they go into the stands, uh, it's done that way. But uh, my favorite part about all this, Mike, you got to get up for these guys. This is... This is outstanding. <laughs> the authenticator chair. And every night I'm down here, Mike lets me know about it. So can you get me like a field reporter chair or something? Guys, I want to know who authenticated the authenticator chair. Is that authenticated, Mike? No. It, it's not authentic. No barcode, huh? No, no barcode on that. <laughs> I wonder if he can find the sandpaper that some guys use uh, on baseballs. <laughs> Was it done? Sutton got caught with sandpaper. Joe Necro. Necro. Right. Have a Joe. Yeah, Joe, not Phil. Right. Right with a nice spin around play to throw on Quintero for the second out. Yeah, uh, Joe was trying to show the umpires that he didn't have anything and was turning his pockets inside out, and out of the pocket came the nail came, file. Was it, it was a nail file or a emery board. I know Don Sutton had a razor blade in his glove. Oh, yeah, he cut him up pretty good. Now, the other thing about Sutton was that uh, he used to leave after he was caught and suspended. Yes. He he used to leave notes in his back pocket as the empires of church. He, he said, you didn't find anything, ha-ha, all those kind of stupid little things. I also remember the time he and Garvey got in a fight here in our ballpark at the uh, Shea Stadium. David Wright throws out Brett Myers. One, two, three inning for Santana. And somebody needs to authenticate that. Four nothing Houston. The central scrutinator.
game of this series tomorrow. R.A. Dickey against Bud Norris. Then the Mets head on the road for 10 games, four in Atlanta, three in Chicago, and three in Washington before they finally trek on home. We can turn the page, too. How about, uh, speaking of Washington, how about Strasburg? Oh, man. He is on the uh, deal now and is going to have a Tommy John operation on his left arm. It's uh, it's very unfortunate, and uh, I don't know that you could have foreseen it, but it's really a cautionary note to everybody that you really need to hesitate before you start anointing guys future Hall of Famers. There's a lot that can happen in anybody's career, and hopefully Strasburg comes back and he's better than ever, but you, you know, never know in this game. The result of uh, the Tommy Down operation, 85% of the ball players come back as good or better after the operation, so... It'll take maybe two years, but he could come back and be even better. Well, look at Tim Hudson and what's happened to him at mm -hmm. an advanced stage of his career. He says he feels better than he has in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Carlos Beltran leads off the home sixth inning. Beltran is one for two. Brett Myers trying to get through the sixth inning, and if he does, it would be the 27th straight start in which he would have gone six innings or more. That would be a new Houston record. Notice how quick he works, too. He really gets on that mound. He looks in for the sign. He wants to throw. He hasn't walked a batter. He struck out three. He's given up five hits, one in each inning. Beltron has one of them, a single to left center in the first. Boy, they play Beltron all face shallow in that outfit. They played shallow this whole series so far, Ralph, this ball club. It's strike three and one. Well, they were there. Paul Park is small. Maybe that's where they always stand. They uh, with Castillo and, and Tejada up. You should see how short they play. Good ball. Tron hits one in the air to deep right center. Back goes Bourne. A lot of room out there. Second one he's caught in that neighborhood tonight. Got Ike Davis back in the second. I think that Carlos got under this ball too much. And Paul doesn't have the carry that he has had in the past. He did his damage with the Houston Astros when he had a playoff series where he had eight home runs. And Houston boos him every time he comes up because he left Houston to go with the New York Mets. I never really understood the animus that the Houston people feel for him. After all, it's not like he'd been there for 10 years. He was there for two months. And uh, yeah, and on top of that, he uh, wasn't his choice. I mean, he just got a better deal that, uh, with the Mets. David Wright takes ball one. David grounds it out and fly it out over two. You okay? I'm fine. I'm just very animated. Oh, up and into Dave. So Myers sends him spinning two and zero. Oh. Watch Myers' reaction here. You know, so what? So what you threw one up and in? Well, that ball wasn't that close anyway. No. It was just off the outside part of the corner. Well, it's just a kinder, gentler game today. Well, you can't actually throw it at anybody, but it happens. Two and two to right. Well, that's typical on right, right there. Having a hard time reaching the outside corner, Ralph? That's right. He got a little closer to the plate today, but not much. He's still deep in the batter's box. And when you have a guy with a good curveball, and that's what this pitcher has, a good curveball, you want to be up in the batter's box and get the ball before it breaks. Not after it breaks because it's off the plate there and you can't reach it. 2-2. Two, two. Oh, the hanger right oh, yeah. there. That's it there. Quintero moving over the on deck circle, but it's out of play. Really at the tiptoe there. Well, this is the hanger right here. Watch this right down Broadway. Mm, and he's just tardy. You got to hit that ball about three or four more inches out toward the pitcher. Right there is behind the pitch and then fouls it back.
Seventh pitch of the at bat to right. And David pops one up. There again, a fastball, and they popped it up. Sanchez squeezes it two out. He got inside on him. Well, we've all been jammed in our careers more than a few times. Must be jammed because Jelly don't shake like that. It's the other way around, did not Mike Davis has thrown the bat well tonight. Had a long drive to right center that was caught and then hit one off the wall in right field for a double. One for two. And the curveball in for a strike. This is just a different pitcher in Brett Myers. It's just he's just got complete confidence, complete command. It's fun to watch a pitcher that has that does a professional job out there. Knows how to pitch. Well, he's been in the major league since 2002, but he just turned 30 years old, and it really appears as though he's turned a corner. Good curveball, one and two. Well, he defeated the Philadelphia Phillies his last start out, and uh, now has won a win against. Every team, I believe, in the National League yep. won 14 games his first full season of the majors in 2003. Has not won as many since, and might not this year for a team that doesn't score a whole lot. But he has been extraordinarily consistent. You know, you put his numbers next to Johan Santana's; they've had about the same season and about the same record. Yeah, and neither one of them's gotten a whole lot of runs. Those are the numbers coming into the game, and they're they're very similar. I hope about all fronts. Boy, I'll say. Three, two, and he walked him. First walk of the night for Brett Myers. Three, two curveball with a four-run lead. That's a news right there. He went away. Well, I guess the reason why he hit that long double the right field. And they didn't want that to happen again. So now Frank Cora is one for two, double down the right field line back in the second. It's about base runners in every inning, but Myers has held them off. We've got a wave going. I noticed. Pitcher's high speed brought to you by Verizon Fios. Call 1 888 Get Fios, and they're about the same in that category, too. But Santana doesn't throw the breaking ball that Myers has. Myers has more of the classic curveball, Ralph, but Santana has more of a flat slider. No slider, yeah. There is a difference between the curveball and slider. Says the more unique face in there. It's he's got it working. Strike three call. All right, Cora looking for something else. Gets the fastball and watches it sail by. Fourth strikeout for Myers. Ralph, terrific happy. Thanks. All right, Gary, thank you. And Keith, nice to be here with you again. All right.
Jason Bourgeois hits one through the hole. And on the first pitch from Santana in the seventh, Bourgeois has his second hit of the night. Oh, first ball, fastball hitting. So Bourgeois gets a rare start. He's two for four. Eight hits tonight off Santana. And now Michael Bourne has been aboard with a single and a hit by pitch. He's also hit into a fielder's choice, scored two runs. So an active night for Bourne. It's a Bourne identity. He got hit last time. Let's see if he stays in. That was always when a left-hander hit me, Gary. I always got a little closer to the plate and made sure I stayed in. I just would not flinch. Would not let him think that he can drill me and intimidate me. Blanco moves inside and right off the fist back to Santana. Quick toss, nice catch by Tejada. And the scoop by Davis, but too late as he couldn't hold it. Well, that was quite a play by Santana, but his quick throw forced Tejada to reach back. Well, this is all about Michael Bourne. He's a speed burner, and Santana, who is a terrific fielder, by the way, gold glove caliber. Knew he couldn't waste any time. Had to get it quickly to Tejada, and that was the difference there, to throw a little off. Nice recovery by Tejada here. That ball could have gone in the left field and been big trouble. So now Bourne aboard with one out. Bourne lucky. <laughs> Hunter Pence one for three. And he takes high for ball one. Pence singled and scored back in the first inning. Top four hitters in the Houston order tonight. A combined six for four, six for 13. With Carlos Lee having the biggest night. He's out on deck. Pence watches the fastball away, 2 and 0. Oh. Meanwhile, Brett Myers has gotten through six innings again. 27 starts, 27 times he's thrown at least six. And a quality start. One hundredth pitch of the night upcoming from Santana. First to check in on Bourne, who has 44 steals after all. Gets under one to left field. And Pagan said he's two out. Carlos Lee coming up. The video recap brought to you by your local Tri State area Audi dealers. Blue pit, diving stop, and then two run bomb. Banaka blast. Oh, fresh. Lee now with 19 home runs, 76 driven in, 28 RBIs in his last 28 games, including tonight. And a ground ball to short. Tejano will go the long way, and he gets Lee to end the inning. Santana's work probably done for the night. Down 4-0.
Blanco as we start the bottom of the seventh inning. Mets have been blanked to this point by Brett Myers. Tolley, who has not started the last two games. Eight hits in his last 20 at bats to get his batting average back over 300. And he grounds one right to the second baseman Sanchez. A lot of that tonight. Myers has retired the leadoff hitter in six of the first seven innings. 27 starts, six innings plus in every one. It's the longest such streak to start a season since Kurt Schilling went at least six in all 35 of his starts back in 2002. Meanwhile, Santana touched up for a couple of runs in the first, and a Carlos lead 2 1 homer in the fifth. And his night appears to be over. Ruben Tejada at the plate, and Mike Hessman on deck to pinch hit for Santana. Tejada one for two. So he's had a hit in each of the last two games. That's certainly a step in the right direction for Ruben with all of his offensive woes. There's Mike Hessman on deck. And Ruben takes a strike one and one. Tejada. That's other 20 year old. Henry Mejia was just promoted from double A to triple A. When does that season get over and it's down there? Well, Labor up, up there, I should say. Yeah. Uh, so he's going to pitch uh, for Buffalo on Monday. And the rosters expand September 1st. That's Wednesday. So who knows? Mejia could be in the Mets rotation after he makes that start in Buffalo on Monday. Minor league still play around 124 game schedule? Under 40. 140. Yeah. Swing and a miss, and Tejada is down on strikes. Five strikeouts for Brett Myers. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by Resident Evil Afterlife in 3D in theaters September 10th. Hesman batting for Santana. It's been a real struggle for Hesman. Triple A veteran who's never really been able to get it together in his major league trials. And that's been the case here, but he has himself a base hit. So it has been with a two out single. So the Mets continue to have had a base runner in every inning against Brett Myers. First ball, fastball hitting, wants it away. Where is it? Inner half. So a two out base runner for Angel Pagan is on a rough night. He struck out twice and flied to left. Now 0 for 7 in this series. That's managed just three hits last night. They have six hits tonight. And Pagan tops one foul. He's starting to expand his strikes a little too much. Well, it's clear that he hasn't figured out. Brett Meyer. Brett Meyer has been pretty much in command. Angel tries to lay off, but he went around. And it's 0 2. So off speed stuff from Myers, who got him to chase one up the ladder up in his eyes his last time, huh? Castillo hoping for a turn on deck. Myers about to throw his 109th pitch of the night. O2 and the curveball misses. Myers went seven in his last start against the Phillies. Struck out nine in that game, a three to two Houston win. Astros have been getting great mileage out of their starters, much like the Mets have over the last 18 games. The Astros starting staff has a 2.30 ERA. Good pitch right there. Pitched him everything, everything away. Got Angel lunging out, sticking his fanny out. Came up and in. You saw the catcher give a high target. Now he can go back out. Now they're going to go back in, double up. And Pagan bounces the curveball foul. And they wanted the curveball down and in. 
get to City Field as the series with the Astros concludes tomorrow afternoon at 1.10 p.m. Get the best seats direct from the Mets at Mets.com or call 718-507-TIXX. Catcher Quintero, who asks for time. Manny Acosta getting ready to pitch the eighth inning. Santana leaving for a pinch hitter after seven, so it snaps Johan's complete game streak. Johan had completed the last three, a win and two losses. First Mets since David Cohn in 1990. The last Mets to throw four straight complete games was Doc Gooden back in 88. But what hasn't changed is that unless the Mets rally, Santana will lose his third consecutive start. 2-2 to Pagan. Pulled over the bag. That's a foul ball. Just missed. Oh, boy, that's close. C.B. Buckner turned and pointed foul. It's the second call that Buckner's made that's drawn objection on a fair foul call. First one went against the Astros. Pagan was certain that that was fair. Jerry Manuel's out to argue, and Pagan's not vacating first base. Remember Carlos Lee was upset earlier in the game when Buckner ruled one foul that Lee thought was fair that would have been an out. Check it out. That's close. Boy, oh boy. He may have got it right. Let's see. Hard to tell. It's where it goes over the bag in the air. If it's over the bag, it's fair. If it's to the right of the bag, it's foul. So Pagan, who was certain that he had himself a hit, will have to come back to the plate with a two and two count. And the curveball in there for a call strike three. A most unsatisfying night at the plate for Angel Pagan. Six strikeouts for Brett Myers. Keeps the Mets off the board. 4 nothing after seven. Get Fios. Get ready for Nikita. The new thriller New York Magazine says is about to knock your socks off. The Daily News calls it flashy fun. Catch Nikita premiering September 9th at 9 on Pix 11, the home of the CW. I like that red bathing suit. Very striking. New battery for the Mets. Josh Tolle, who pinch hit, stays in behind the plate. And Manny Acosta will pitch the eighth inning. Manny worked two perfect innings against the Marlins night before last. 
very impressive since coming back from Buffalo. Chris Johnson leads off for the Astros in the eighth inning. 0 for 3 tonight. Struck out his last two times up. And he takes high from Acosta. Johan Santana threw 100 pitches over seven innings. Allowed four runs, eight hits, one walk, four strikeouts, hit a batter, and gave up a home run. And on the hook for what would be his ninth loss against 10 wins. Good curveball by Acosta, one and one. They just don't score runs for Johan. And you got to admit that you said it, Gary, the five home runs in his last three starts have really hurt him. They've accounted for eight runs. Yep. Eight of the ten runs he's given up in yeah. his last three starts. The Astros scratched out two runs in the first inning tonight, four singles and a walk. Acosta gets Johnson chasing, and Chris Johnson has struck out for the third time tonight. He's kind of cooled off, and I think the Mets pitching staff started his struggles. Remember, we the Mets came into Houston with this young man red hot, and now they just cooled him off. Had a couple of hits last night, but remember, he also had that base running mistake. I was fascinated by the post-game explanation of it. Remember, uh, he was at second base, and there was a base hit to right field, and. Johnson came around third and now Padrique was filling in as the third base coach put his hands up to stop him and Johnson just kind of meandered halfway between third and home and was tagged out in a rundown and Johnson's explanation after the game is that he thought that Frank Hoare had caught the ball on the fly for the third out and that Padrique was just telling him hey you don't have to run it's the third out. So all you kids out there when you're on base you tell yourself. Runners on first and second, whatever the situation, and you tell yourself how many outs. What am I going to do when the ball's hit? So it's all in your head. It's literally, you've taught that in literally. Well, it helped Frank Corr to his 10th outfield assist of the year, most of the National League. He might have gotten him anyway. That was very philanthropic of him. Sometimes a little charity is uh, is a good thing. In there for a call strike three. So back to back strikeouts for Acosta as he gets Sanchez looking two down. Good curveball. We know Acosta has good stuff. This is a good one right here. Taking that stuff back to Atlanta from whence he came this week. That's a curveball for a strike to Tommy Manzella, who's two for three tonight. Manzella drove in a run with the first inning infield. Hit a strange play. Bases loaded, 3 2 count, runners going, right fielding it right at the bag, but Carlos Lee able to slide into third before Wright got there. And by the time David adjusted and threw the ball to first base, Manzella had beat it out and a run had come home. Wilton Lopez up in the Houston bullpen. Lopez pitched had two strong outings against the Mets in Houston. Matt Lindstrom on the disabled list. Brandon Lyons been doing most of the closing, but Lopez got a save against the Mets in Houston. Pedro Feliciano up in the Mets bullpen. One two to Mancella, and he fights off the fastball. Now the one two and it's lined to the left field and Manzella has his third hit of the night. So a two out single for Tommy Manzella who started the night hitting a 208. That's a hanger here. That is hit number nine for the Astros. Manzella has a third of them. Here's Humberto Quintero who's 0 for 3. Two fly balls and a ground out to third. 
Well, the Braves are well on their way to snapping their four game losing streak, pounding the Marlins 10 to 1 in the sixth. The Phillies won this afternoon, so if that stands up, the Braves will stay two up on Philadelphia. Off the corner, 1 0 to Quintero. The Phillies also began the day leading the Giants by a half game in the wild card. Giants got shut out by the Diamondbacks and Barry Enright last night. They are just starting with Barry Zito pitching for San Francisco. Up the middle and a base hit for Quintero. So back to back two out hits for the Astros. Two on and two out and now Jeff Blum will come up as a pinch hitter for Brett Myers. So Myers done after seven strong innings. He allowed no runs and six hits through 114 pitches. Walked one struck out six. Blum has been sitting out the last few days with some neck problems. We'll have to turn around because Jerry Manuel is going to go to the bullpen and bring in the left hander. This call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon Wireless introducing the Droid X the next generation of does. Jeff Blum is only two for 25 as a right hand batter this year. So Jerry Manuel brings in Pedro Feliciano to face him. And Pedro throws a first pitch fastball for a strike. Well, there's Pedro's number. It has not been a good year for Pedro. It's kind of fizzled in the second half. A lot of hits for the innings pitched. The right handers kind of dictating to him. That's just ugly. 396 against the right hand hitters. Although he continues to be effective against the lefties and you know the Mets tried to expand Pedro's role this year to become more than a situational left hander and it has kind of backfired. Manzella and Quintero the base runners with two out. But you know as Jerry Manuel put it tonight he said you know we're a little shorthanded in the bullpen and that's code for you know we've got a seven man bullpen with only six guys we can use and uh, you know, that's an unfortunate situation. You've got a guy sitting at the end of that bullpen, Oliver Perez, who hasn't pitched in 27 days. So, you know, that puts a burden on everybody else in that bullpen, and it's meant that they've had to try to expand everybody's role, including Feliciano. Well, there's no question about it, and uh, Jerry, I'm sure, will be very happy when the rosters expand. Yeah, that'll help. Get some more bodies in that bullpen. Too little, too late, possibly. 2 2 to Blum. And it's in there for a call strike three. So Feliciano gets this right hand hitter out as he fans Blum to end the inning. Two hits and two left. Mets running out of time. Down 4 0.
Chrysler.com or see your local Chrysler dealers today. Ah, date night, Saturday night. Looks like Al's daughter, the camera number two's daughter. Camera number two does sits there and just shoots folks the up above home plate. That's all Al does is put his camera on the field from up above. And doesn't move it. Now I think that may be oversimplified <laughs> just a tad. <laughs> Luis Castillo leads off the home eighth against Wilton Lopez and takes a strike. I mean it's not like Al just <laughs> stands there and watches the camera do the work for him. He has to focus on all that stuff. <laughs> See the numbers on Wilton Lopez has been spectacular lately. Just one run allowed in his last 20 appearances. Well, he had four innings pitched in that four game series in Houston against the Mets. He pitched in the final three games of the series and got a save in the second game of that series. His first save. Now back one and two to Louie, who's one for three tonight. And there's Al. You see, see? look at, look at, just hanging out. Look, look at, join the ball game. Look at, is the camera moving? Is what's Al doing? He said, doesn't have to look at the camera. One hand tied behind his back. He's blindfolded. Oh, see, now he's moving. <laughs> see, he just he's doing that just to prove that you're wrong. See, that's his camera panning from left to right. Yes. Al's a good panner. Provides the panorama. <laughs> there is there Al. He is. Well, look how smooth that is. Al's, Al's a professional. It's not, not like a, one of those jerky cameras. <laughs> Slapped to short. Manzella circling in and too late. Castillo beats it out for his second hit of the night. Luis Castillo has the most infield hits of any active player in the major league. Well, still say you got to make that play. Can't let that guy be out of ground ball in a four nothing game in the eighth. And he clearly beat it. C.B. Buckner with the call at first. Mets have the leadoff man on in the eighth. And now Beltron takes the strike. Carlos is one for three. So the Mets have had a base runner in every inning. But they've never got anybody as far as third base. And Lopez ahead on Beltron 0 and 2. Well, one thing Lopez does, he throws strikes. And he showed that in the three games he pitched, his last three games of the series in Houston. And he came in at extra inning ball game. He pitched in tight ball games. He goes after hitters. 27 year old from Nicaragua, one of the few major leaguers from that country. The most prominent of all time was Dennis Martinez. Of course, El Presidente. Just a beautiful night in New York. You do realize that right now that Mars is in the closest proximity to the Earth. Is that right? Yes. Well, dribbler stays fair. Lopez puts the tag on Beltron. It's a nice play by Lopez to grab it and tag in one motion and avoid getting run over. Very prescient right there. Uh, not prescient. Very. Uh, look, I can't think of the right word here. But this is the proper play. It's a four nothing lead. Get the out. Who cares about the lead runner? If that lead runner scores, it's four to one. Get the out. Get Beltron, who's hit 40 home runs in his career. Get it. Get him out. But getting back to Mars, it's the closest it's, it is to Earth, and it's at 12:30, around 12 o'clock at night. It's right next to the moon. And it's called the two moons. I don't see two moons. I only saw but, one. Trust me, I've been watching the last three nights. Mars is big in the sky, right by the moon. You've been up late. Oh yes, I was off. <laughs> How long does that last? Uh, I don't know. It's uh, but it's the closest on the. I believe it already was the 27th. It was the closest to Earth, and it won't be there for a while. David Wright finds the hole. Castillo around third and coming on home with the first bat run of the night. It cuts the Houston lead to four to one. David Wright with an RBI single for his 86th run batted in. Well, I never understand why Clef want to play David, a second baseman up the middle, fastball down the pipe, David set up all that way. That ball is right. If he's been playing straight up, that ball is right at him. I mean, you don't have to really worry about Louis stealing third base, keeping him close. you got a four-run lead. 
you can just go back and play defense. So after the Mets were held scoreless for the first seven by Brett Myers, they have scratched out a run of the eighth. And now Ike Davis has had a good night. A double, a walk, one for two. And he takes a strike from Lopez. So my feeling there, Gary, a 4 nothing lead. Lou, you want to steal third base? Be my guest. You better make it. We're going to play defense. We're up four runs. It's the eighth. And Ike pulls one toward the whole base hit. Right goes to second. And just like that, the Mets will get the tying run to the plate here at the bottom of the eighth. Too much plate. He took a little off that. And that ball's in the hole. And they're going to stall for some time here. Have a little meeting in the mound. I'm sure there'll be some people getting up in that Astro bullpen. So three hits in the inning for New York. And now Jeff Francoeur comes to the plate as the tying run. Jeff Burdak, the left-hander, up in the Houston bullpen with Josh Tolley behind Frank Corr in the order. That's a serious mustache. Okay, this is Wright's hit. Look right here. Don't worry about him. Play defense. It's a four-run ball game. And look what happens. He doesn't move over. Neither. Either. Neither one. Well, the Mets trying to take advantage. Frank Corr tonight, one for three, double down the right field line in the second inning. That's now have nine hits in the game. And Frank Corr takes a hack. Four up and in fastball. That's the pitch that Jeff just cannot lay off. He cannot lay off that pitch, and no one can hit that pitch. Lopez gets ahead 0 2. Of course, had some better at bats, better approaches, but in the big spots, he still reverts to that hacking style. It's got to be, this is the big out for Lopez. It's going to be his last batter. And he strikes out Frank Cora on three fastballs. That's the second out of the inning. You got Tolley up here, hasn't faced very many left handers. You've got Burdak up, who's had a terrific year, and here comes Brad Mills, the manager, to make the change. And this is this kid just reared back and threw it by Frank Corp. So the Mets have gotten a run against Wilton Lopez. Now the lefty Burdak is going to come in to face Tolley. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon Wireless, introducing the Droid X, the next generation of does. We'll be right back.
final lot of the eighth. Well, Burdak has had a terrific season. Look at that left-handed batting average. He has been a left-handed specialist since 2007. Lefties are hitting 176 against him. That's the sixth lowest opponent batting average, lefty-lefty in Major League Baseball. So this is the right matchup for the Astros. Josh Tolley's had 110 at bats this year, but only 10 against left-handed pitching. He's two for 10 against Southpaws. Batting here with two out and two on in the eighth, with the Mets down four to one. Tolley came in as a pinch hitter in the seventh and grounded out and stayed in behind the plate after Blanco got the start. Brandon Lyon, the Houston closer, up. Could be called upon for a four out save if Burdak falters. And Tolley takes a strike one and one. Ruben Tejada is on deck. Right drove in a run with a base hit. He's at second. Davis followed with a base hit. He's at first. That's a score. Their only run here in the eighth. Mm. And that's it at the knees. One and two. Good slider right there. Right to the glove. That's a good one. That's some play. So it's only a lot to try and fight out of a hole. One two off the plate with that slider and it's two and two. You can survive a long time in this game if you're a left hand pitcher and get a lefty out. Bobby Parnell waiting around in the Mets bullpen. Two two to Tolly. Fastball hit toward left center but coming on is Bourgeois and he makes the diving catch. Now Bourgeois with the good speed in left field that pays off for the Astros as he takes a base hit away from Tolly and saves a run. That's scratch on one trail four to one after eight. Joe Blanton of the Phillies beat the Padres for the second straight day. The Nats beating up on Kyle Loesch. Adam Dunn with his 32nd home run. Cubs leading in the ninth despite Joey Votto's 32nd. Braves got six in the second to Rod Ricky Nolasco. And they have the big lead 12 to 1 in the seventh. Jason Bourgeois leads off in the ninth inning and takes a strike from Feliciano. There's the rest of the scoreboard. Pirates lead the Brewers, Rockies, and Dodgers. And the Diamondbacks again with the early lead. Against the Giants. That's Zito, wasn't it? It was. 
Right at the second baseman. And Castillo throws out Bourgeois one away. Pedro Feliciano has retired the first two hitters he's faced. Let's check in with Kevin. Well, guys, what happens when a pitcher gets in a little rut, starts getting hit around? He doesn't trust his stuff as much. Interesting nugget the other night. Pedro was in the game. Two spots. Josh Tully put down the call for a slider. Both times, Pedro shook him off, went to a fastball. Both of those resulted in base hits. And I talked to both parties about it. And Josh said, yeah. You know, he's been shaking off the slider a little bit lately, and, you know, to be quite honest with you, we, we've talked about it, and, you know, not really sure why. We've, we thought it's been a good spot as Horn retired, and I talked to Pedro about it. So you know what it is? Yeah, I, I think it's simple that I'd be getting frustrated by the amount of hits I've been giving up, and for some reason I have this hero mentality to try and strike guys out or try and break bats, and I, I've got to get back to my slider. I've got to get back to throwing it. I've got to get back to throwing it back door, and, you know, Josh put those calls down, and they were the right calls, and, and I shook them off, and it, it's just very interesting, kind of the psyche of a guy who's been so reliable for so long, just trying to kind of get back to basics, fellas. Well, he's been good tonight. Three batters all retired. Two out of the ninth and now Hunter Pence. And he takes wide for ball one. Well, it's a fine line in it. Uh, the mental edge, the confidence. And it can be a guy that's had the years that Feliciano's had here with the Mets and very fragile. One on one to Pence is one for four tonight. That's well, as true for a pitcher, I guess, as it is for a hitter. So absolutely, I can tell you the same thing. There are times a pitcher had me out there, and I was in a slump, and I didn't. I thought I was trying to get a base hit. Was like paddling upstream. Well, Feliciano has the luxury of being out there almost every day, like an everyday player. Which you know, when you're trying to fight your way out of a slump, you're sitting around. It could be a worse thing. 68th appearance for Feliciano, the most in the league. One, two to Pence, and the backdoor breaking ball just missed. One and two, two and two. In the bottom of the ninth, the Mets will have eight, nine, and one in the order. Tejada, the pitcher spot, and Pagan coming up. The Mets have only two healthy players left on their bench Chris Carter and the recent call up Luis Hernandez, who's a switch hitter. Bounce foul. Nikita, she's a rogue assassin on the run. The only way to stop her is to take her out if they can. In two weeks, you'll see the most talked about new show this fall, Nikita, premiering September 9th at 9 on Pix 11, the home of the CW. Nikita's getting a lot of airtime today. The modern Emma Peel. <laughs> the Avengers. Diana Rigg. I had a crush on her in high school. Did everybody? Oh gosh, she was hot. She was so so sexy, and she was really the first, you know, liberated woman on the screen, an action character that was a heroine, and she was wonderful. Paired up with Patrick Knee as John Steed. The Edwardian McNee. With his derby, dressed impeccably. I love that show. Not to be confused with Patrick McGowan. No, as the saint. No, he was the Patrick McGowan was the uh, was the prisoner. Uh, the prisoner, excuse me. Roger Moore was Roger the Moore was, was the saint. saint. Here's the two-two, and he got him with the off-speed pitch. So a good outing for Pedro Feliciano. He re retires all four to face him. Now the Mets, three runs down, come up in the bottom of the ninth.
life costs more without free score. Mets have been behind from the outset in this game, trying to fight their way uphill on the bottom of the ninth. Tour of the City Field is brought to you by Jeep. I live, I ride, I am Jeep. Beautiful Saturday night in the ballpark. A crowd of over 33,000 tonight. Out on the Shea Bridge, hoping for a Mets rally. Luis Hernandez will make his Mets debut leading off, batting for Ruben Tejada. Hernandez called up yesterday from Buffalo, where he was hitting 280. He's played in 103 Major League games, lifetime 244 hitter with Baltimore and Kansas City. Brandon Lyon on to pitch the ninth for the Astro. Hernandez a switch hitter. And he takes high for ball one. Lyon has converted his last eight save opportunities and in five of the current wins on the road trip for the Astros. He has had three saves. How many Hernandez's does this make in Mets history? Charlie said he almost gave him my number. No, he gave, he gave Buddy's number instead. Number three. Buddy will always be number three. That Anderson Hernandez and you, anybody else? I know. Part. Oh, uh, El Duque. Right, Orlando Hernandez and uh, Levon Hernandez. Yes. That's that's five. Any more? Not Enzo. No. <laughs> two and one from Lyon. And Hernandez fouls it back. Two and two. Chris Carter's come out on deck to bat for the pitcher. Manny Hernandez, pitcher, 1989. And Roberto Hernandez, of course. Yes, and that was a big trade. trade. Oliver Perez, for Xavier Nady. Always think about the cab ride in Miami that brought about that trade. So Luis Hernandez is the seventh Hernandez in Mets history. 2 2 for the Lion. And the breaking ball bounced toward third, a foul ball. Luis Hernandez signed by the Mets as a free agent in February after splitting last year between Kansas City and AAA Omaha. Called up yesterday to give the Mets some infield support with Jose Reyes unavailable because of the oblique injury, but still on the roster. And so Jesus Feliciano was sent down and Luis was called up. Seventh pitch of the back coming for Lyon. And he pulls one down to first. Lee with a falling grab. And he gets the out. One away. No, two nice plays tonight by Mr. Lee, who's what, only the fourth time he started at first base? He is their left fielder. He made a terrific grab early in the ball game off the bat of Santana. That would have been a cinch double, but here he just stays in front. It's not pretty. But he gets the job done. Well, the, uh, the Astros would love to be able to move the lead at first base for full time. And if he plays like that, why not? So now Chris Carter will bat for Feliciano with one out and nobody on. And Chris takes the strike. Carter hitting at 265. Has 11 pinch hits this year. Got a good hard slider right now tonight. Lyon. Pitch is throwing better than he did in Houston when he got a save, I believe, in that final game. Broken bat. Behind the mound. Grabbed by Lyon. Two out. Well, that is a severe saw off right there. Always embarrassing for a hitter. It's happened to me, I'm sure, more than a few times. He gets sawed off like this. Ouch. And so the Mets are down to their final out of the night. 
with Angel Fagan coming up. Very rough night at the plate for Angel, who has struck out three times. Also fly to left. And in conversation with Dana DeMuth before he settles in. Coming up right after the game on picks 11, it's the picks news at 10. And right after the game, you can switch it over to SNY for Lincoln Mercury post game live. Two out and nobody on. And Pagan, who's 0 for 8 in this series, swings at the first pitch and fouls it off. So Pagan has cooled off again. Had a four hit game in the series against the Marlins. But August has been more troubling for Pagan than any month so far this year. Got their only run of the eighth on a David Wright RBI single. They've had nine hits tonight, but just the one run. Yeah, now they're down to their final strike. Brandon Lyon trying to save it for Brett Myers, who went the first seven, allowed no runs and six hits. Myers in line for his tenth win. Johan Santana, who's won ten, is in line for his ninth loss. One two to Pagan and another broken bat Sanchez comes in to grab it the sidearm toss and the ball game is over a one two three ninth inning for Brandon Lyons who are in the save for Brett Myers as Santana loses his third in a row the Astros even up the series in a game of peace with a four to one win well the Mets now with the Atlanta winning 12 to two in the eighth and Philadelphia already on the books that puts them now. 10 games back in the division and pushes them eight back in the wild card. They just can't afford to be playing five to keep sputtering here, a win and a loss. And the sun is setting here, but Santana victimized by the home run again. A two run shot by Carlos Lee, his 19th. And Brett Myers, my goodness, what a, what a, what a year he's having. He goes to 10 and 7. Myers has now made 27 starts this year. Got at least six innings in every one of them. Tonight even better. Seven scoreless for the 30-year-old former Philly. Meanwhile, Santana gave up two runs in the first inning and then the two-run homer to Carlos Lee. And that was plenty for the Astros tonight as the Mets are dumped a game below 500. The game summary brought to you by Chrysler. Visit Chrysler.com today. So the Astros win four to one that sets up a rubber game in the series tomorrow afternoon with R.A. Dickey on the mound against Bud Norris Dickey who came so close to a win in Houston a couple of starts back before giving up a ninth inning home run to Jeff Blum that sent that game into extra innings and handed Dickey no decision. And Norris pitched that final game in the series in Houston and got the win. He went had a strong outing seven innings two hits two runs. Let's head it down to the field to Kevin Burkhardt. Kevin? Got Brandon Lyon who closed that again. And Brandon, just, you know, this has been a great road trip. I mean, a 10 game road trip is tough any time, but you've gone through the NL East. I mean, you swept the Phillies in four. Just, what's been the feeling uh, away from home for this Astros team here? I don't think it's just away from home. I think it's just the way we've been playing the last few weeks. You know, everyone's coming to the ballpark with the attitude that we're going to win today. And it takes all 25 guys, and that's what we've been doing is putting together. How hard is that when a team is struggling to kind of, you know, to get that going, to get that ball rolling in the right direction? Yeah, all it takes sometimes a little momentum and that's what we've uh, seen to be playing like lately and it's been starting with our starting pitching they've been going deep on in the game keeping us in games we've been making some comebacks late and uh, throwing the ball real well and the hitters are doing whatever it takes to get some runs up on the board what has Brett Myers I mean I mean the fact that he just goes deep in every game what does that meant to this team it's been huge you know uh, saves the bullpen doesn't overexpose the bullpen too much he's been out there battling every day and he keeps doing it and doing it every every time he goes out there and it's exciting to watch you, you've been in a, a multitude of roles in the bullpen you've closed eighth inning seventh you, you've done pretty much it all are you Real comfortable, and obviously you're in pretty good groove pitching the ball right now. Yeah, I'm just out there throwing strikes and being aggressive. I'm not thinking about too much what inning I'm pitching. Just when they call down, go in there and be aggressive, and uh, use all my stuff and throw strikes. Put the pressure on the hitters, and it seems to be working out. You know, one other thing, you know, see Carlos Lee. He's only played first base four times this year. I mean, he looks like he's been out there. For, he made two outstanding plays out there tonight. Yeah, he's been great out there. He's been doing a good job. You know, only been playing there probably a handful of times all season. Uh, made a great play right there in the ninth. You know. And, I mean, he just keeps doing it. He's a great player, and we love having him in the lineup wherever he's at. All right, congrats. Thanks for the time, okay? No problem. Thank you. Guys, another save for Brandon Lyon and the Astros' victory. Back to you. Nice.